Hello there. Hello. Welcome to Professor Groveshorn Podcast. You can't see me. Yeah. We're, but you can see a little bit about Japan here and what we're going to be doing. That's right. Let's well, not take too much time with the introduction. Let's just jump into let's this. Just, let's just go. Let's look so, at the feudal powers Japan? in Japan. Yeah. Yes. Let me set this stage for you. Go right ahead. Japan lies east of China in the direction of the sunrise. In fact, the name Japan comes from the Chinese word ribbon, which means origin of the sun or land of the rising sun. From ancient times, Japan had borrowed ideas, institutions, and culture from the Chinese people. Japan's genius was its ability to take in new ideas and make them uniquely its own. And Japan's island location shaped the growth of its civilization. About 120 miles of water separates Japan from its closest neighbor, Korea, right here. Um, and 500 miles of water separates Japan from China. The Japanese were close enough to feel the civilizing effect of China, yet they were far enough away to be reasonably safe from invasion. The geography of Japan. About 4,000 islands make up the Japanese archipelago, or island group, that extends in an arc more than 1,200 miles long. Historically, most Japanese people have lived on the four largest islands, Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikaku, and Kyushu. Japan's geography has both advantages and disadvantages. Southern Japan enjoys a mild climate with plenty of rainfall. The country is so mountainous, however, that only about 12% of the land is suitable for farming. Natural resources such as coal, oil, and iron are in short supply. During the late summer and early fall, strong tropical winds called typhoons occur. Earthquakes and tidal waves are also threats. The first historic mention of Japan comes from Chinese writings of the first century BC. Japan at this time was not a united country. Instead, hundreds of clans controlled their own territories. Each clan worshipped its own nature gods and goddesses. In different parts of Japan, people honored thousands of local gods. Their varied customs and beliefs eventually combined to form Japan's earliest religion. In later times, this religion was called Shinto, meaning way of the gods. Shinto was based on respect for the forces of nature and on the worship of ancestors. Shinto worshipers believed in kami, divine spirits that dwelled, dwelled in nature. Any unusual or especially beautiful tree, rock, water, or mountain was considered the home of the kami. The Yamato Emperors by the A.D. 400s, the Yamoto clan had established itself as the leading clan. The Yamoto claimed to be descended from the sun goddess Amateriusu. By the 7th century, Yamoto chiefs called themselves the emperors of Japan. The early emperors did not control the entire country, or even much of it, but the Japanese gradually accepted the idea of an emperor. Although many of the Yamoto rulers lacked real power, the dynasty was never overthrown. When rival clans fought for power, the winning clan claimed control of the emperor and then ruled in the emperor's name. Japan had both an emperor who served as a figurehead and a ruling power who reigned behind the throne. This dual structure became an enduring characteristic of Japanese government. During the 400s, the Japanese began to have more and more contact with mainland Asia. They soon came under the influence of Chinese ideas and customs, which they first learned about from Korean travelers. One of the most important influences brought by Korean travelers was Buddhism. In the mid-700s, the Japanese imperial court officially accepted Buddhism in Japan. By the 8th or 9th century, Buddhist ideas and worship had spread through Japanese society. The Japanese, however, did not give up their Shinto beliefs. Some Buddhist rituals became Shinto rituals, and some Shinto gods and goddesses were worshipped in Buddhist temples. Cultural borrowing from China. 
Interest in Buddhist ideas at the Japanese court soon grew into enthusiasm for all things Chinese. The most influential convert to Buddhism was Prince Shotoku, who served as regent for his aunt, the Empress Siku. A regent is someone who rules when a monarch is absent, ill, or too young to rule. In 607, Prince Shintoku sent the first of three missions to China. His people studied Chinese civilization firsthand. Over the next 200 years, the Japanese sent many such groups to learn about Chinese ways. The Japanese adopted the Chinese system of writing. Japanese artists painted landscapes in the Chinese manner. The Japanese also followed Chinese styles in the simplest arts of everyday living, such as cooking, gardening, drinking tea, and hairdressing. For a time, Japan even modeled its government on China's. Prince Shintuku planned a strong central government like that of the Tang rulers. He also tried to introduce China's civil service system. However, this attempt failed. In Japan, noble birth remained the key to winning a powerful possession. Unlike China, Japan continued to be a country where a few great families held power. The Japanese adapted Chinese ways to suit their own needs. While they learned much, they still retained their own traditions. Eventually, the Japanese imperial court decided it had learned enough from the Tang China. In the late 9th century, it ended formal missions to the Tang Emperor, which had fallen into decline. Although Chinese cultural influence would remain strong in Japan, Japan's own culture was about to bloom. In the late 700s, the imperial court moved its capital from Nara to Heihan, the modern Kyoto. Many of Japan's noble families also moved to Heihan. Among the upper class in Heian, a highly refined court society arose. This era in Japanese history from 794 to 1185 is called the Heian period. Gentlemen and ladies of the court filled their days with elaborate ritual and artistic pursuits. Rules dictated every aspect of court life. The length of swords, the color of official robes, forms of address, of address even the number of skirts a woman wore. Etiquette was also extremely important. Laughing aloud in public, for example, was frowned upon, and everyone at court was expected to write poetry and to paint. The best accounts of Heian society came from the diaries, essays, and novels written by the women of the court. One of the finest writers of the period was Lady Murasaki. Lady Murasaki's 11th century masterpiece, The Tale of the Ginja, is an account of the lives of a prince in the imperial court. This long prose narrative is considered the world's first novel. Feudalism erodes imperial authority. During the Heihan period, Japan's central government was relatively strong. However, this strength was soon to be challenged by great landowners and clan chiefs who acted more and more as independent local rulers. Decline of Central Power For most of the Heihan period, the rich Fujiwara family held the real power in Japan. By about the middle of the 11th century, however, the power of the central government and the Fujiwaras began to slip. Large landowners living away from the capital set up private armies. The countryside became lawless and dangerous. Armed soldiers on horseback preyed on farmers and travelers, and pirates took control of the sea. For safety, farmers and small landowners traded parts of their land to strong warlords in exchange for protection. With more land, the lords gained more power. This marked the beginning of a feudal system of localized rule like that of ancient China and medieval Europe. Since wars between rival lords were commonplace, each lord surrounded himself with a bodyguard, bodyguard of loyal warriors called samurai. Samurai means one who serves. Samurai lived according to a demanding code of behavior called Bushido, or the way of the warrior. A samurai was expected to show reckless courage, reverence for the gods, fairness, and generosity towards those weaker than himself. Dying an honorable death was judged more important than living a long life. The, 
the Kamakura Shogunate. During the late 1100s, Japan's two most powerful clans fought for power. After almost 30 years of war, the Minanu Madoto family emerged victorious. In 1192, the emperor gave a Minamoto leader named Yaritomo the title of Shogun, or Supreme General of the Emperor's Army. In effect, the Shogun had the powers of a military dictator. Following tradition, the Emperor still reigned from Kyoto. Kyoto was rebuilt in the ruins of Heihan, which had been destroyed in war. However, the real center of power was at the Shogun's military headquarters at Kamakuru. The 1200s are known in Japan history as the Kamakuru Shogunate. The pattern of government in which shoguns ruled through puppet emperors lasted in Japan until 1868. The Kamakuru shoguns were strong enough to turn back the two naval invasions sent by the great Mongol ruler Kublai Khan in 1274 and 1281. However, the Japanese victory over the Mongols drained the shogun's treasury. Loyal samurai were bitter when the government failed to pay them. The Kamakuru shoguns lost prestige and power. Samurai attached themselves more closely to the local lords, who soon fought one another for as fiercely as they had fought the Mongols. Although feudal Japan no longer courted contact with China, it would continue to absorb Chinese ideas and shape them into the Japanese way.